1.992. Now that C dimension is important because it comes up to the calibration. And once you get all the C dimensions done, item 10, um, no, sorry, we were still doing calculations here. Item 10, to determine the maximum amount of shim possible in the application in the space available with the spring that's used in this application, do the following process. Start with the A number, which is that one. Subtract the MIH number, which is that one. And that would be the amount of shim that is possible to put in there, the maximum shim. In this case, that's 200, or 200,000, or 0.2. That's the maximum amount of shim that you can put on that spring, on that valve, on that head. Now, you do all that because what that does is at the racetrack that gives you a report so you can look at it. Here's actually a fully printed out report. It's a little, probably a little easier to read. Eight, that's number one. Let me get the right one here. We were looking at number one. Okay. So now we've actually finished that up and as it turns out, it actually needs a 30,000 shim. So if you add the 30,000 shim, uh, or you take the 30,000 shim away from the maximum shim of 200, that is a shim to go space. In other words, we can put another 170,000 worth of shim in that, underneath that spring. So if we check it at the racetrack and all of a sudden that 160 pounds comes, starts coming up at 140, all we can do is we can just pop that valve spring loose, slide a shim under it, and bring the pressure up. Pretty cool, huh? Now, what we're going to do is we need, the next process we're going to do is we're going to find the calibration setting. Now what the calibration setting does, let's see, is this the one that has it? No, I think it's, it's the other one. It turns out the calibration settings are both on the even numbers. Here we go. Now, you go through and we find the biggest C overall. Remember, that's a big number. Okay, we find the biggest one, because that will be the one that's the tallest. Okay? In this case right here, number 8 intake is 1.990. Okay? Well, that becomes, as far as our calibration goes, see under calibration, that becomes our zero. I'll show you how to set the calibration in a moment. And every intake valve, other than number 8, will be a smaller number than that which means we have to go past the number. So see right there, this is 23 thousandths more, and that's 25 thousandths more, and that's 16 thousandths more. Now, let's talk about setting our zero on the little tester here. Okay, now what was that number? Let's set it here. Number one, uh, number eight intake. Uh, was 1.9, I don't know, see we put it down here, intake calibration of 1.990 is number 8. Okay, so we're going to set our height mic right here to 1 point, I got my glasses on, 1.990. There you go. Okay, now we'll slide that little jewel right in there. Now we bring that down. Okay, now we need to set our indicator here because what that does is that tells us the distance between there. Now what we're going to do is we're going to turn this around here and the easiest thing to do is we have both these needles pointing straight down. So we lock that down right there. That or two don't hurt. Okay, now we can raise that up. It's now calibrated and we go to, um, let's take number two, we're doing intakes aren't we? Number two intakes. So that would be a 16. So we'll get the valve spring for number 16. Now we got to always check the valve, the the. Okay, the the. We bring it around here. We always have to check it with a retainer. Now we bring that down to right there. But remember, the calibration is 16 thou. We have to go 16 thou more. Okay, there it is, and we got a number right there of 153 pounds. Okay, that's not enough for this little jewel. So now what we do, we're going to put this shim in. See, we've already done this before, and we said it needed a 32,000 shim. So that's what went. went he's got for us there is a 32,000 shim. So we put the shim in there, and we bring it back down to zero again, plus the 16, remember, our calibration. And that says 160 pounds. 
he wrote it down as 162, but two pounds out of 160, that's with the tolerance, don't you think? Mm -hmm. Okay, now you go through and do all your intakes, and you go through and then go through and do all your exhaust. Then what you've done is you've created this chart, which not only ensures that every valve spring is installed at the correct pressure, regardless of height. I don't care if it's this long or this long. I just care how much more I can put in there. And then what happens is, um, at the racetrack, uh, between rounds, you can pull the valve covers off, get in there with your spring checker, and check your springs. And your spring checker may say, where we said on this machine right here, it said it was 162. On the spring checker, it may say 175 or 145. I don't care. Uh, because that spring checker, if it says 145, and then the next time I check it, it says 125, well, I've just lost 20 pounds of pressure. So I'll go back, pop the valve loose, slide a shim under it, bring it back up. Cool? I think so. So we set it by pressure, not by dimension. Because, in fact, the dimension is irrelevant. If you have any questions, like I said, about a 20-step process here. It's all written down. So you can have a good close look at it. There's some information here on the back. Dimensions and code information. Okay, we've got a little chart here on the side, a little picture. Um, and, and how you get all the calculations. A distance is there, B distance is there. And total valve lift, installed height. OHT is on the head test or spring pressure from fresh maintenance to be referenced on between round sessions. Different formulas, A plus B equals C. IH equals E, A minus cup e minus shim equals installed height, D plus total valve equals MIH. Okay, any questions? Give me a call. Bye.